So today, the scripture readings again remind us and ask us to reflect on how we should live a life of wisdom. One of the central messages of the letter of St. James is to live a life of wisdom. What does it mean to live that kind of life? One of the things that St. James made it clear that living a life of wisdom, therefore, requires us to look at riches in the right perspective. Otherwise, riches can be the cause of our downfall. And indeed, in today's first reading, St. James reminds us that uh, those of us who use unscrupulous means to get our riches will eventually destroy ourselves. But also riches can also be destructive, especially when our hearts are hardened, when we no longer feel with the sufferings of others, when we live for ourselves and forget our humanity. That's the reason why sometimes people who are rich, very often they are lacking a touch with the lives of others. That is the danger of being too rich, so much so that we are no longer feeling with others. Actually, what makes us truly happy in life is when we are truly humane and when we are able to relate with our brothers and sisters, that gives us great joy. A person who lives for himself alone cannot find joy. And that is why in today's uh, Gospel, uh, Jesus reminds us that we need to look at life in an absolute manner. What is truly absolute for us in life? And therefore, he gives us the example of the question of sin. If your hand or your foot cause you to sin, he said, cut it off. I think what is most important for us is not so much the literal image that our Lord presented to us, but it's the seriousness of the choices that we make in this life. And the choices we make in this life have a bearing on eternity. And it is important, therefore, that we need to really consider how we want to live today, not just for tomorrow, but for eternity. And so, once we are clear that our life is more than just on this earth, then we will know how to make use of whatever the Lord has given to us. And that's the reason why in today's Gospel, and St. James as well, calls us to repentance. And the Lord said, everyone will be sorted with fire. There are two symbols involved here. Uh, sort is a preservative. A fire is, of course, a purification. It helps us to be purified. And so the Lord is asking us to purify the way we look at life, the way we look at our wealth, our resources, and what we have been blessed by Him. And so we need to be attentive to all these blessings that the Lord has given to us. Most of all, that especially for those of us who are responsible for these resources the Lord has given to us. He was speaking about children being scandalized. In other words, anyone who has been entrusted with responsibilities, and that means all whatever we have received, then it is important that we should use them well and not allow all this to destroy, not just ourselves, but those under our care. And those of us as parents, I think we have to be watchful to be good stewards of what we have. Because sometimes parents can be the cause of destruction of our own children because we pamper them too much and then they do not value the things of life, the blessings of God. They begin to take them for granted and they abuse the privileges. And this is very important for us because purification is a necessary process for us in life. And not only purification, the symbol of sword is a symbol of preservation. We need to preserve ourselves, therefore, from being contaminated by the world. And preservation, of course, is what the symbol of sword represents to us. And so the Lord said, if you want to be purified, if you want to be preserved from evil, from a life of folly, then what must you do? You need to be sorted again. And that is why I think it's important that if we want to get our perspective in life in order, then we need to come to Jesus. We need to allow Jesus 
to purify us, to enlighten our minds and enlighten our hearts. And how can this be done? So firstly, I like the example that Jesus gives. If anyone gives a cup of water to drink, and just because you belong to Christ, he will certainly not lose his reward. You know, it is not easy to be generous in life. Generosity does not happen overnight. I think what is important is to underscore that generosity of life begins from small things. Don't expect a person to give his life to the church, give his life to God when he can't even give a few dollars. So it's important because when a person has this experience, the joy of giving small things, then you start to learn to give a little bit more and then more and then more. We must begin with small things. So people who have not learned how to give must be taught how to give small things first. So when they have little joys, then they say, wow, I give someone a bar of chocolate and this boy is so happy. Next time we buy him a whole box of chocolates and because the kind of joy that we receive when we start giving. And so this is how we should form ourselves, how we should grow. But at the end of the day, it is also important that when it comes to the question of wealth, it's good for us to take note what the psalmist is telling us. He says, there's a lot of those who trust in themselves, like sheep they are driven to the grave, where death shall be their shepherd. So do not fear when a man grows rich, when the glory of his house increases. He takes nothing with him when he dies. His glory does not follow him below. A right perspective towards wealth, towards our blessings. To tell you the truth, uh, with or without, uh, it does not really bring us real happiness. Those of us who have blessings, if we do not value them, if we do not use them well, we will also destroy ourselves. And those of us without, we can also be miserable because we fail to realize that sometimes those who are uh, without things of life, they're actually being purified, made stronger, and also becomes more appreciative of all that they have received. So in life, in my perspective, and I see life that way, that whatever the Lord has given to us, let us use them well. But at the same time, we shouldn't be overly attached to all these things because a day will come when we will be without all these things and can you still be happy in life? And so it is the kind of freedom in our heart to thank God, to be appreciative of whatever the Lord has given to us and to use them for ourselves, for the good of others and to enjoy and to be grateful for all that we have received. In this way, we will find greater peace and joy.